a uh, very good evening to the student who have joined can you let me know that uh, if my voice is audible to you in the chat box please let me know if my voice is audible to you also please let me know uh, if you can uh, see the presentation and also the video okay so i hope everything is fine with the audio and uh, presentation we will wait till it's 7 pm and then we will start today's summary session meanwhile please wait we will start at sharp 6 7 pm
Okay, so it's uh, almost uh, 7 p.m. So I think uh, we should start with the summary session because we have only one hour of this class. So just uh, let me wait for a minute, then I will start this class. Okay, so let me start with the class. Meanwhile, I have made the call open so that everybody have asked to join it. So very good evening and welcome to the last class, the summary session of this NPTEL course of Organic Chemistry in Biology and Drug Development. So today it is the summary session in the last class, which was the week 12 live session. It was also a summary session. It was actually a, a mixed kind of session where we have, I have given uh, you the MCQs to solve, uh, 12 MCQ from the 12 uh, week course content, if, uh, each question from uh, each uh, uh, week's course content. But today, uh, I will not have any kind of MCQ or question answer session. I will directly go to some, uh, um, I will directly uh, try to summarize the topics which I left uh, last day. So basically last day, the topics which I summarized was mainly based on the uh, initial amino acid proteins, the isoelectric point calculation, followed by uh, the things like uh, mainly to, uh, last day I discussed about the uh, enzyme inhibition, the kinetics of enzyme inhibitions, uh, about the reversible, irreversible, competitive, uncompetitive, non-competitive uh, inhibition. All I discussed yesterday in the last class. And also uh, in the last class, I discussed about the different different purification processes. So today what I will discuss it is that uh, I will start with the, the protein synthesis. Uh, how the protein synthesis happens uh, with the help of the RNA and the DNA polymerization, the enzymes which are uh, involved in the DNA in the DNA replication. Then I will go to directly to the pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics, few things which I didn't discuss uh, in, uh, broadly in the sessions, uh, in the previous sessions. But today I will try to uh, discuss it in uh, a broader aspect. Then we will discuss a little bit about the drug discovery processes, the clinical trials and these things. And uh, then we will move towards the different different uh, uh, therapeutic agents. We will discuss about anti-cancer therapeutic agents, antibiotics, antiviral, and uh, anti-cholesterol, anti-hypertensive, and this kind of drugs and drug targets, which uh, also I will discuss today. So let us start with the topics, uh, which I'm uh, uh, the uh, our summary session. So since today it is the last summary session, I will ask you to uh, write the questions which you think uh, you do, did not, uh, do not understand, or if you have any doubt, any query, you can let me know now. Uh, uh, after today, we won't have this kind of live interaction, but I will share my email ID to, with you. So if you have any doubt or any query, you can just uh, contact me through the email also. Okay, before examination, if you think you have any doubt or query, you can let me know through the email because after today, we won't have this kind of live uh, interaction session in the Google Meet. Today is the last one. So let us discuss the or uh, summarize few topics. So as I say, uh, today I won't have any kind of uh, question answer session, only I will summarize a uh, few important, uh, important topics. So first, let us discuss a little bit about the protein synthesis. So we all know that I will just summarize the things. So the protein synthesis, first the DNA. DNA is involved in synthesis of RNA and RNA is the major component which is uh, involved in the, the synthesis of the protein. So DNA in a nucleus acts as a template mRNA is processed and released into the cytoplasm, mRNA binds to the ribosomes, tRNA carries the amino acid to mRNA, anticodon codon complementary base pairing occurs, peptide chain is transferred from the resident tRNA to incoming tRNA, then tRNA departs and protein modification uh, after translation it will it also happens in the protein synthesis. The protein synthesis is one of the very major uh, uh, metabolism process or uh, process of our body. Uh, so in case of this protein synthesis RNA is the component which is mainly used that mRNA, RNA, tRNA they 
take part into the protein synthesis but the template comes from the dna the dna in the nucleus it acts as a template followed by the mrna trna anticodon codon sequence and ribosome is the uh, main uh, cellular component where this protein synthesis takes place we all know the ribosome ribosomal subunits in the eukaryote and in the prokaryote the both they are different right so this differences already i have discussed earlier uh, when the this topics were in the you know, weekly assignments uh, related to uh, mcqs i have discussed it so you have to summarize this thing so the protein synthesis uh, how the uh, process happens so there are three steps of the protein synthesis okay the first is the initiation followed by elongation and third is the termination so what is the unit the smallest unit of the protein synthesis it is the amino acid right so amino acids they join with each other with the peptide linkage and the uh, growing polypeptide chain it folds itself and uh, it forms the protein different different proteins right the different different proteins like fibrous globular we have already discussed right so the main process i think this is the steps are the same in the initiation step elongation termination all these things happens in the ribosome so the ribosome has a large ribosomal subunit and the small ribosomal subunit you all know and the subunits are differs from the prokaryote and eukaryote also the their uh, volume their other aspects also different if uh, changes uh, in prokaryote and eukaryote so the large cell ribosomal and small cell ribosomal subunit they come together and uh, we first we have this trna trna to brings this amino acid okay and this trna have a three base um, uh, three base code which is known as anticodon code and the mrna we have this codon which is the uh, codon is basically a uh, i mean a structural unit of the which comprises of three nucleo bases right so the mrna we have this uh, the protein synthesis takes place from uh, five prime to three prime uh, three prime uh, direction okay and uh, the growing so first we have this start codon this uh, this start, start codon is a aug and the, we have three stop codon uag ugag ugn now uag so you have to remember this start codon is basically not only uag it is a five prime aug three prime and the stop codon is not only the stop codon is the uag ug or um, uh, ua ua it is a five prime then stop codon then three prime you have to remember these things also this is small small things but uh, these are very crucial so we have the codon on the mrna then the first step is the initiation step where the translation and complex forms and the trna brings the first amino acid in the polypeptide chain to bind and to start the codon on the mrna okay then the uh, step 2 is the elongation step trna is bring the amino acid one by one and add to the polypeptide chain followed by the termination termination what happens the release factor recognizes the stop codon so there is a release factor also in this translational complex okay this release factor will identify which is the stop codon when the stop codon is there it will signal this polypeptide chain to stop now so growing and it will complete the polypeptide chain and it will automatically it will be detached and this the all the components of this cycle means the large subunit small subunit mrnt are and all it will be recycled and released for the new uh, uh, translation and cycle so this is the all the steps for <clears throat> along with the figures so whenever you are uh, in the case of the examination purpose when you are writing a an answer if possible now uh, you uh, must have to give uh, you may have use the figures also okay now as summer also was asking me that how it will be happen so if there is a, a structure or the figure type of question so you will be given option to upload the answer by taking the picture so uh, be ready with the all the things like this uh, pen pencil and all this uh, paper also during your examination all this thing about the examination it will be notified to you via email so you don't have to worry now about it now it will be notified you by the end of this week so the timings the uh, about all the examination and so on it will be notified to you so transcription versus translation so now these terms these are very inter uh, very sometime it uh, may be little bit uh, i mean uh, problematic or sometime confusing so you have there is not a uh, position of confusion because you have to remember the transcription is the process of transcribing a piece of dna into rna and it's known as the transcription and the enzyme involved in the transcription is the rna polymerase okay and the translation involves the synthesis of a protein from a mrna template converting the mrna code into the amino acid sequence within a protein okay for example so the d from dna to mrna is the transcription mrna to protein is the translation process 
so now dna uh, replication is one of the very important topic okay so the dna replication this is the overall uh, dna replication process so as you can see we have the parental dna which acts as a template right this parental dna have two strand one is from 5 prime to 3 prime and another is a 3 prime to 5 prime this dark blue color is the parent dna okay this is the what is the first step of the dna replication the first step is the unwinding of this parental dna we know this the dna is a double helix okay so the dvd uh, the unwinding of the double helix is the first step and the enzyme which is involved here is the helicase so this is the helicase enzyme it is uh, it stays here and it uh, basically unwinds this double helix and there are some single strand binding proteins which stabilize this unwound dna and this position is known as a replication fork okay so now the third step is the uh, synthesis of this uh, dna in the leading strand so now which is um, uh, the leading strand is synthesized from the 5 prime to 3 prime continuously so there are two strands okay so the, the first you have to remember this the DNA in during the replication the dna will be always synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime but it can be synthesized uh, continuously or it can be uh, synthesized discontinuously so if it is synthesized continuously it is known as the leading strand as in the uh, case of leading strand it will be synthesized from the strand of 3 prime to 5 prime okay and uh, here it will be synthesized continuously so it is known as a leading strand and this will be synthesized uh, by the uh, help of the enzyme dna polymerase now in the lagging strand which is synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime discontinuously what happens uh, here so here will be we will have a rna primer so this rna primer and primase enzyme they will help uh, the okazaki fragment okay uh, for, uh, will be formed so the, what is the for what is the step the lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously primer synthesizes a short rna primer which is extended by dna polymerase to form the okazaki fragment and the rna primer is replaced by a dna or other dna polymerase uh, so the dna ligase joins the okazaki fragments and to form the growing strand so this is also from the 5 prime to 3 prime synthesis but it is the discontinuous which is known as the lagging so overall direction of the replication is from the uh, the overall the, so the dna is uh, synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime okay and uh, this is the overall uh, in short um, it is the summarized form of the dna replication so there are different different enzymes which are important in case of dna replication we have the dna ligase so dna ligase seal the mix between the okazaki fragments converting them to a continuous strand of dna um, and covalently closes the mix of the in the double stranded dna okay helicase helicase uses the energy from the atp to break the hydrogen bonds holding the base pairs together this allows two parental strands of dna to begin unwinding and forms two replication forks each strand of the parental dna has its own helicase in the humans two inherited diseases like warner's syndrome and bloom syndrome result from the helicase defects e coli contains at least six different helicases some involved in the dna repair and others in the conjugation the principal helicase in the dna replication is the dna b then we have dna polymerase which is the most important enzyme for the dna replication dna rep polymerase are the enzyme that synthesize dna molecules from the deoxyribonucleotides which are the building blocks of dna the enzyme is essential to dna replication and usually work in pairs to create two identical dna strands from the single origin dna molecule during the process dna polymerase reads an existing dna strand to create two new strands that match the existing ones also it performs the proofreading and error connection then we have primase primase is an enzyme involved in the replication of dna and is a type of rna polymerase primase the catalyzes the synthesis of the short rna or dna in the some organism segment called the primer complementary to the single strand template the primase is of key importance in dna replication because not known replicative dna polymerase can initiate the synthesis of a dna strand without an initial rna dna polymer for complementary dna elongation after this elongation the rna piece is removed by a 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease and refilled by dna we have topo isomerase every cell has enzymes that increase or decrease the extent of the dna unwinding is called the topo isomerase topo isomerase is known uh, as the dna guidance and act as a topology of dna topo isomerase bind to the double stranded dna and cut the phosphate backbone uh, to either one or both the dna strand the intermediate break allows the dna to untangle unwind and the end of this process the dna backbone is resealed again topo isomerase is an enzyme that can change the linking number also so these were the enzymes 
factors which are very important in case of the DNA replication and from the DNA replication these things are very important not only how the process happens but uh, also uh, the enzymes which are involved in the DNA replication these things are also matters okay now the next topic which we are, we are going to discuss is the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics so these two uh, uh, terms are very very much important in case of the drug development process okay so what is pharmacokinetics and what is pharmacodynamics so basically pharmacokinetics is the uh, first thing which is how uh, what our body is doing to a drug okay means uh, when we are taking a drug for what happens First, the drug gets absorbed in our body, followed by the distribution means where the combo active component of the drug gets distributed in the tissues, the blood to the, the systematic uh, flow and everything. Then followed by the metabolism and the excretion from the body. So pharmacokinetics is the study of how a drug reaches to its target in the body and how it is affected on the journey. That is the effect of the body on the drug. Pharmacodynamics, on the other hand, is a study uh, which uh, of the how the drugs interact with the molecular target, that is, effect of the drug on the body, how the drug is uh, acting on the body, how it is affecting all the uh, things uh, in the body, like the, uh, for example, how uh, when you are taking an antibacterial drug, so how um, first it is uh, you are taking it orally, let's say, then it is getting uh, uh, absorbed in the, the your the stomach and all the uh, your uh, bodily uh, fluids and then it is getting metabolized and excreted that is a pharmacokinetics but when the active components of the drug are reached to the uh, bacteria infected cell how it is acting on that particular cell how it is killing the bacterial cells this study is known as the pharmacodynamic study so pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are two uh, very crucial uh, terms in the uh, biological uh, sciences or the uh, medical center chemistry so what is the pharmacokinetics as i have mentioned you have to remember this word adme adme means adme at absorption distribution metabolism and excretion so first step is the drug administration so the drug administration can be oral intravenous intraperitoneal subcutaneous intramuscular or inhalation followed by the absorption and distribution it can be via membranes of the oral cavity gastrointestinal tract perineum skin muscle and lungs then the after the absorption and distribution the drugs goes to the systematic distribution in the plasma protein binding such as uh, the binding to the target site let us neuron receptor inactive storage deposits like bone and fat the drug can be mm, get uh, deposits in the bone and fat also then we have this blood plasma where the drug uh, gets metabolized in the uh, inactivation in the liver after the metabolism the metabolites are getting in, in excretion by instant and kidney lungs sweat glands and etc and excretion products can come from the liver also uh, um, in the uh, various methods okay so these four things are the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics the, so there are receptors in our body we have discussed about different different receptors already protein molecules with one or more binding site located on the cell membrane and on other receptor receive a signal from the body's uh, chemical like neurotransmitter hormone and enzyme the, a single uh, signal will cause the molecular event inside the cell or to occur drugs enhance as agon enhance which are the agonists diminish partial agonists block antagonists uh, the, the generation transmission receiving of the signal affinity the attraction between the drug and receptor high affinity drug will bind easily to the receptor low affinity it requires a higher concentration of the drug to get therapeutic response drug potency amount of the drug is required to produce therapeutic response the drug response curve effective dose it is amount of the drug produces a therapeutic response of the 50 percent of the pupil taking it toxic dose td amount of the drug produces adverse effects in 50 percent of the people taking it therapeutic index or ti margin of safety ratio between td and ed higher the ti is the safer of the drug to be considered in general non-prescription drug have much higher ti than the prescription drug okay so these are about the terms of pharmacodynamics now pharmacokinetics has several parameters okay and these parameters are very important so what are the parameters different parameters of pharmacokinetics so first is the peak concentration which is the peak plasma concentration of the drug after administration the amount of the drug now when it reaches to the maximum concentration in the plasma it is known as the maximum plasma concentration peak time or t max it is the time when the drug concentration reaches to the maximum of the drug administration at this point the rate of the drug absorption is equal to the drug elimination then we have the terminal half life the time required for the concentration of the drug to reach its original value area under curve or auc is the integral 
of the concentration time curve uh, after a single dose or in steady state it is a measurement of the extent of the drug bioavailability it shows the total amount of the active drug that is bioavailable in the systematic circulation then we have the clearance the rate at which the drug is removed from the body uh, of the drug per unit uh, time uh, okay now uh, this is the known as the clearance so these are the different different top, uh, parameters for the, of the pharmacokinetics which are very important Then in the drug discovery, first thing which we discussed was the lead compound. So what is the lead compound? So lead compound is a compound demonstrating the property likely to be therapeutically useful. The level of the activity and target selectivity are not crucial. Used as a starting point of the drug design and development found by the design molecular modeling or NMR or by screening of the compounds, natural or synthetic. Need to identify a suitable test in order to find the lead compound. Active principle, the compound uh, that is isolated from the natural extract and which is principally responsible for the extract's pharmacological activity often used as a lead compound. So how the drug discovery happens? So the, this is the, no, there are two steps. First is the, uh, from target discovery or validation for up to the preclinical trials. And the second is the, uh, from preclinical trials to clinical trials. So what is the initial steps? So the initial step is target discovery or the validation. Here the target ID or target prioritization happen. Then uh, we have the disease target association and ligandability assessment followed by the heat identification. Heat identification happens uh, with the help of the protein modeling, virtual screening and library enumeration, followed by the lead identification. Here it happens by scaffold hopping, binding mode prediction, uh, physical, chem property, uh, physical chem property prediction, synthesis planning, in silico admit. Lead com, um, optimization by multi-parameter op optimization, prediction of the DMPK endpoints, generative modeling, PKPDA, PKPD means pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics modeling. Then we have the preclinical development, which is the dose prediction and translational biomarker discovery. So these are the initial steps. Then what is the preclinical trial or testing? So preclinical trial is a laboratory test of the new drug of a new medical device. Usually done on the animal subject to see if the hoped for the treatment really works or it is safe to test on humans. Many preclinical tests include the pharmacokinetics, the study of the how the drugs move through the living organism. Four processes are examined in pharmacokinetics, which I already mentioned. These are absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion. Other tests include chemistry tests like purity, stability, self life of the product, as well as the development studies like dosing packaging and the administration via tablet or the injection okay so these are the uh, things on the preclinical which happens in the preclinical trial or testing then after preclinical trial we have the chemical trial process so this takes uh, like 5 to 15 years a special uh, designation like uh, can uh, speed up this process like uh, we have uh, seen in covid pandemic uh, the vaccine for pandemic uh, covid was uh, approved uh, in a very short time due to the urgency okay so these are the uh, things in the clinical process the first is a preclinical trial which i have already mentioned exploring if the how the new drug may work and if it is safe to uh, test on human once the drug passes the preclinical trial with success it is approved for the human testing and when the there are three different phases of the human trial first in the phase one exploring the safety and dosing of the drug in phase two exploring the effectiveness of the drug phase three exploring the safety and effectiveness compared to the currently available treatment all this pre um, human trial happens in the volunteers uh, okay and then followed by the fda review uh, then before this every uh, of when the drug passes all the three uh, clinical trials then it goes to the fda for approval and in the fda the confirm the safety and effectiveness of the drug and then after the fda is uh, com confirms these things it will the drug will be approved for the market to use and after that the phase four trial happens which is basically the effect of the drug in the large number of patient okay it is also known as the uh, post market surveillance to see if uh, in the large number of uh, per patient the drug is uh, acting or is it uh, giving rise to some kind of toxicity or ineffectiveness these things are uh, determined in the phase four 
now what is uh, we have already discussed about the fda and these things so what is fda so there are different regulatory bodies which govern these things of the drug approval on these things so fda is the us department of the health and human services it is also the fda stands for the food and drug administration so the food and drug administration the fda or us fda is a federal agency of the united states department of health and human services one of the united states federal executive departments the fda is responsible for the protecting and promoting public health through the control and supervision of the food safety tobacco products dietary supplements prescription and over the counter pharmaco pharmaceutical drugs vaccines and bio pharmaceuticals blood transfusions medical devices electromagnetic radiation emitting devices cosmetics animal foods feed and veterinary products okay then uh, then we have this european medicinal agency also which is the uk based uh, governing body MHRD, MHRD, uh, MHRD, sorry, MHRD, which is the regulatory medicines and medicinal device. The medicines and healthcare products for the regulatory agency MHRD is an executive agency of the Department of Health and Social Care in the United Kingdom, uh, which is uh, responsible for ensuring that medicines and medical devices work and are expeditiously safe. We have PMDA, Pharmaceuticals and Medical Devices uh, Agency. It is a Japanese uh, governmental organization similar to the FDA of United States and MHRD. HRA of United Kingdom or a Central Drug Standard Control Organization in India or European Medicine Agency in Europe. Central Drug Standard Control Organization or CDSCO is under the directorship um, of the General Director um, uh, or General of the Health Services Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. It is a national regulatory authority in India. Okay, and we also have FFS, FSSAI, which we all know is the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India. Okay, which is also a governing body of India. All these things are not. Uh, I mean, it will not uh, come into the examination. Okay, but this. Things are important uh, in case of your uh, for understanding or for uh, your knowledge. Okay, that's why I thought to include this thing. Since we are discussing about the drug approval and all the FDA approval, so I should think uh, I thought you should uh, need about different different governing bodies. Then we have different different things uh, terms which we used in case of the biological systems. Like uh, these terms you have I think uh, heard of many times. This is the in silico, in vitro, and in vivo testing. So what is in silico? In silico means it is performed in a virtual setting. Means in computer or a virtual simulation. This is known as the in silico, the computational studies. In vitro means in glass, meaning the study takes place in a test tube or any uh, glass apparatus. Or in vivo means in life, meaning the study takes place in a living organism. In vitro and in vivo are mainly used uh, in case of this biological study. So in vitro refers to a phenomenon in which a given procedure is performed in controlled environment outside the living organism. In vivo refers to a phenomenon in which the experiments are performed using a whole and living organism. Dead organism or isolated cellular components are used in case of in vitro. A whole living organism is used in case of the in vivo. Performed under the control laboratory condition, the in vitro is performed in vivo is performed under physiological condition. In vitro is less expensive, whereas the in vivo is expensive. In vitro is less time consuming, less precise. In vivo is more time consuming but more precise. For example, of in vitro is the cell culture in the petri dish and experiments in the test tube. In vivo is the drug testing by the model organism like mice, rabbit, and apes. And in vitro fertilization refers to the artificial fertilization method which fuses the male female gametes occurs outside the human body. Regular fertilization is the of the the fusion of the male female gametes occur within the body refers to the in vivo fertilization then we have the ic50 ic50 is a very important unit which is the half maximal inhibitory concentration this is the measure of the potency of a substance in inhibiting the specific biological biochemical uh, function ic50 is quantitative measure that indicates how much of a particular inhibitory substance the drug needed to inhibit in vitro the given biological process the biological component by 50% the biological component of the cellular cell receptor microorganism i50 values is typically expressed as the molar concentration so i50 is commonly used as a measure of antagonist drug potency and pharmacological research i50 is comparable to other measures of the potency such as ec50 excretory drug ec50 represents the dose and plasma concentration required for obtaining 50% of the maximum Uh, effect in the in vivo i50 can be determined by functional assay and competitive uh, binding assays 
Then we have the therapeutic index, the LD50 by ED50. The, this is the measure of the ratio of understand undesirable and desirable effect of the drug for in vivo system. Therapeutic index could be a ratio of LD50, which is lethal dose in the 50% of test animal uh, to the ED50, means the effective dose of the uh, or the maximum dose of the 50% test animal. Larger of the therapeutic index, greater uh, is the margin of safety of the drug. So these were the topics. Uh, which were different uh, around the about the drug discovery things okay so now i will move toward the things which are uh, different different uh, <clears throat> therapeutic agents so we will start with the antibiotics so antibiotics are the antibacterial agents we know so there are different different classes of antibiotics first on the most important classes are the penicillin we all know so there are different generation of antibiotics okay so the penicillin have different generation like penicillin g is the first generation followed by uh, amoxicillin which is the second generation we have the generation the ticarcillin in the third generation and the piperacillin in the fourth generation then we have the cephalosporins like cepha, cephalotin in the first generation uh, cefuroxime in the second generation, uh, ceftazidism in the third generation, and cefepime in the fourth generation. We have quinolones, the like naledixic acid, the first uh, in the initial generation, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin as uh, the second generation 2, 3, and 4 respectively. We have macrolide, the first generation macrolide being erythromycin, followed by the erythromycin and erythromycin. Then the tetracyclines like oxytetracycline, doxycycline, tigracycline. So this uh, you don't need to remember all these structures of the different different antibiotics, but remembering the, the initial the common structure is very important. Like for penicillin, this is the common structure of the penicillins. This is the for cephalosporins. This is for quinolones. This is for macrolide the macrolide structure and tet tetracycline structures are a little difficult so you don't need to memorize but you need to uh, know how it looks like okay you don't need to memorize it but you need to know how it looks like so that if there is a question given directly from the structure you should know that this is a structure of macrolide or tetracycline this type okay uh, whereas the penicillin and and quillerone structures are uh, re relatively easier so different different antibiotics or antibiotic antibacterial agents have different different mechanism of action so remembering the mechanism of action is very important so this diagram if you can remember this diagram i think it will be fine because this in this diagram it is a very uh, uh, summarized and very but very informative like the antibiotics there are these are the mechanisms of action first is the cell wall synthesis the cycloserine vancomycin bactericin Penicillin, cephalosporin, monobactams, carbapenems. Uh, so these are the co um, components uh, which inhibit the cell wall, bacterial cell wall synthesis. We have this uh, folic acid metabolism. We have then uh, folic acid metabolism inhibitors. We have discussed it in the last class. It lot about it, this in last class. Like from paraminobenzoic acid, sorpava to DHF and THF. It is a folic acid meta metabolism. The first step means from uh, paraminobenzoic acid to DHF, this conversion is inhibited by the sulfonamides, which are the reversible inhibitor of this uh, enzyme, uh, okay, and uh, the, this inhibition is a reversible inhibition, and DHF to THF, uh, this uh, conversion uh, is uh, by trimethoprim, uh, is inhibited, uh, inhibits this uh, DHF to THF conversion, then we have the cytoplasmic membrane and structure and function inhibition by polyvaccines and adaptomycin, we have this uh, Cytoplasm. So these are the, uh, the different different. Uh, this is the cytoplasmic membrane and this is the cell wall of this bacterial cell. We have the, the lipid biosynthesis inhibitor in the case of plantasomycin. Then we have protein synthesis, uh, tRNA binders like uh, mupirocin and uh, puromycin. Mupirocin is a very uh, popular uh, antibiotic which treats the skin infections basically. Then we have the protein synthesis like uh, different different inhibitors like 30S inhibitors. So we all know that in the ribosome, in the prokaryotic ribosome, like bacterial ribosome, it has two subunit. One is 50S uh, subunit and another is 30S subunit. So the 50S subunit, the, uh, in the inhibitors which binds with the 50S subunit and inhibit the protein synthesis are the erythromycin. Uh, which are the macrolides we have chloramphenicol we have clindamycin and we have lincomycin and the 30s inhibitors which bind to the 30s subunits are the tetracycline the spectromycin streptomycin um, genomycin canamycin amicacin and neutrofurans okay 
Then we have the DNA directed RNA polymerases like rifampicin and septrovaricines. Then we have the RNA elongation um, inhibitors like actinomycin and DNA guidance. The components, uh, the inhibitors which bind with the DNA guidance and uh, inhibit the DNA replication are the nalidixic acid, ciprofloxacin, uh, which are the quinoline and novobiosin. Okay. So these are different, different uh, mechanism of action uh, by which the antibiotics works and different, 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 different examples. So these remembering these examples are very important. Okay. You have to remember the uh, which antibacterial Material agent uh, works in which mechanism of action and so the, so on. Then we will discuss about the antihypertensive drugs. So first class of anti antihypertensive drugs are the diuretics. So diuretics are also called the water pills. These are the medication designed to increase the amount of water and salt expelled from the body as urine. They often uh, they are often prescribed to help the treat blood pressure. We have furosemide, the sold under the brand name of the Laxix among the other. It is a loop diuretic medication used to treat the fluid buildup due to the heart failure, liver scarring or kidney disease. It may be also used to treatment of the high blood pressure. Furosemide was patented in 1959 and a health organization's list of essential medication approved for the medical use in 1964. It is on the, uh, okay. So amylorite, it is sold under the name of the uh, Midamore among the others. It's a medication typically used with the other medication to treat the high blood pressure or the swelling due to the heart failure and liver cirrhosis. We have ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors are very important anti-hypertensive drugs. So ACE or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are the uh, class of medications used primarily for the treatment of the high blood pressure and heart failure. They work by causing the relaxation of the blood vessels and as well as decrease the blood volume which lowers the uh, blood pressure and decreases oxygen demand in the heart. ACA inhibitor inhibits the activity of the angiotensin converting enzyme or ACA and is an important component of the renin angiotensin system. This is liable to convert the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 and hydrolyze the bradykinin. Therefore, AC inhibitors decrease the formation of the angiotensin 2 a vasoconstrictor uh, constructor and increase the level of bradykinin a peptide vasodilator. This combination is synergistic in lowering the blood pressure. The example of AC inhibitor is the captopril, sold under the name of the cap, uh, capotain and is an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor used in the treatment of the hypertension and uh, some type of the congestive heart uh, failure. Then we have the AT1 blockers. These are the angiotensin 1, uh, angiotensin 2 uh, receptor blockers. Okay, this formal, um, uh, which formerly angiotensin 2 receptor type 1, AT1 and, um, antagonist, also known as the angiotensin receptor blocker, angiotensin 2 receptor antagonist or AT1 antagonist. These are the group of the pharmaceutical that bind to and inhibit the angiotensin 2 receptor type 1 thereby block the um, arteriolar contraction and the sodium retention effects in the renin angiotensin system. Their main uses are in the treatment of hypertension, the high blood pressure, the diabetic uh, nephropathy, kidney damage due to the diabetes and um, congestive heart failure. They selectively block the activation of the AT1 receptor preventing the binding of the angiotensin 2 compared to the AC inhibitors. These substances are AT1 receptor antagonists. They are they, um, uh, they block the activation of the angiotensin 2 AT1 inhibitor receptors. AT1 receptors are found in the smooth muscles of the vessels, corticoid cells, and the adrenal gland. Adrenal gland synapses blockage of the AT1 receptors directly causes the vasodilation, reduces the secretion and the, of the vasopressin, and reduces the production and the secretion of the aldosterone. Among the other action, the combined effect reduces the blood pressure. We have low certain, uh, ebay certain, omnisertain, carnal certain, well certain, uh, firme certain, azil certain include the tetrazole group. And last, we have the beta blockers. So, atenolol, uh, for example, uh, atenolol, the commercial name is tenorbine, is a beta blocker that affects the heart and uh, the blood circulation through the arteries and uh, veins. Atenolol is used to treat angina, which is the chest pain and hypertension. It is uh, also used to lower the risk of the um, death uh, after the heart attack. Nebulolol is a uh, novel, uh, highly um, cardio selective beta blocker with the antihypertensive efficacy similar to the other beta blockers but with the tolerability better than the older agent since in the class which may permit nebulolol to be used more widely and effectively than other beta blockers we have metoprolol is a beta blocker that affects the heart and blood heart circulation blood flow through the arteries and metoprolol is used to treat angina and hypertension and uh, it is also used to lower the risk of the death and needing to hospitalization after the heart failure then we have the antiviral drugs 
एच आई वी इज द मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ द ह्यूमन इम्यूनोडिफिशियंसी वायरस सो इट इज अटैक द बॉडीज इम्यून सिस्टम द वायरस डिस्ट्रॉय द सी डी फोर सेल्स दिस सेल्स हेल्प टू अर बॉडी टू फाइट इन्फेक्शन एच आई वी वन कैन सीवियरली डैमेज योर इम्यून सिस्टम एंड लीड टू द एड्स विच इज द एक्वर्ड इम्यूनो डिफिशियंसी सिंड्रोम सी डी फोर सेल्स आर द व्हाइट ब्लड सेल्स दैट प्ले इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द इम्यून सिस्टम your cd4 cell count gives you an indication of the health of your immune system your body's natural defense system against the pathogen infection and illness currently there is no cure for hiv aids once you have this infection your body can get rid of it however there are many medication that can control hiv and prevent the complication this medication are known as the anti retroviral therapy or art so there are different different anti retroviral agents like uh, reverse transcription inhibitors so reverse transcription transcriptase is an rna dependent dna polymerase that utilizes a strand of rna to synthesize double stranded uh, viral dna this mechanism helps the retroviral gene to get incorporated into the host cells gene various rt inhibitors are the developed uh, which on the basis of the binding site and chemical class of the compound are classified into the nrtis nucleoside reverse transcription inhibitors and nnrtis non nucleoside reverse transcript inhibitors we have the protease inhibitor proteases are the enzyme that cleave the protein molecule into smaller fragment hiv protease is the vital for both viral replication within the cell and release the mature viral particles from the infected cell various protease inhibitors are developed for the hiv treatment some of the fda approval drugs such as class of the sequinavir indinavir atazanavir ritonavir nelfinavir ampranavir lorpanavir and tripranavir then we have nnrtis non nucleotide non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors among the hiv1 rt inhibitors non nucleoside reverse transcription inhibitors have gained different uh, place due to their unique antiviral potency high specificity low toxicity in the anti retroviral combination therapies used to treat hiv then we have this nrtis nucleoside reverse uh, transcriptase inhibitors while nrtis and nnrtis are alike are effective in terminating uh, the, the dna synthesis and hiv replication nucleoside reverse transcription inhibitors or nrtis inhibit the reverse transcription by causing the chain termination after they have been incorporated into the viral dna this was the first group of the anti retroviral agents to be used against the hiv nrtis lack the 3 prime hydroxyl group of the deoxyribose mod as a result following incorporation of a nrti the next incoming dinucleotide cannot uh, form the next 5 prime to 3 prime phosphoriester bond needed to extend a dna chain thus when a nrti is incorporated viral dna synthesis is halted this process known as a chain termination all nrtis are classified as the competitive uh, substrate inhibitors okay then we have the cholesterol lowering drugs So statins uh, are the class of drugs often prescribed by the doctors to help to lower the cholesterol levels in the blood. By lowering the levels, they help to prevent heart attacks and stroke. Studies have shown that certain people statins reduce the risk of the heart attack, the stroke, even the death from the heart attack by 25 to 35 percent. Statin is also known as the HMG CoA reductase inhibitor. If you remember, HMG CoA uh, reductase is a very uh, crucial enzyme which uh, in the cholesterol biosynthesis. Okay, and I have already uh, I think mentioned that statins are very important component which acts as HMG CoA reductase inhibitors and Uh, is a primary or the most potent class of the anti uh, cholesterol lowering drugs okay it means uh, cholesterol lowering drugs not anti cholesterol lowering uh, so these drugs are very crucial for lowering the cholesterol so so lovastatin is sold under the brand name of the uh, mevacor Now, among the others is the statin medication to treat high blood cholesterol and reduce the risk of the cardiovascular disease lovastatin is a the component uh, compound isolated from the aspergillus steros which is the first statin in the market simvastatin uh, is sold under the brand name of zocor among the others is lipid lowering medication it is used along with the exercise drug and weight loss to decrease the elevated lipid uh, levels it is also used to decrease the risk of the heart problem and those in the high, in, uh, high risk simvastatin was patented by merek in 1980 and came into the medical uh, use in 1992 it is uh, on the world health organization list of the essential medication 
Atorva statin or Lipitor is lipidroidin drug. It is included in the statin class of medication by inhibiting the endogenous production of cholesterol in the liver. Statins lower the abnormal cholesterol and lipid level and ultimately reduce the risk of the cardiovascular disease. More specifically, statin medications competitively inhibit the enzyme HMG-CoA or hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A reductase, which uh, catalyzes the uh, conversion of HMG-CoA to mevalonic acid. This conversion is a critical metabolism metabolic reaction involving the production of several components involving the lipid metabolism and transport including the cholesterol low density lipoprotein or ldl sometimes referred to the brad cholesterol and very low density lipoprotein robostatin or crestor is the drug along with the proper diet can help to lower the bad cholesterol and fats such as ldl triglyceride and raise good cholesterol in the blood um, pitavastatin which is calcium uh, which is a calcium salt of, uh, of this uh, pitavastatin is a member of blood cholesterol lowering medication of the class of the statins like other statins it is an inhibitor of hmg coa reductase the enzyme that catalyzes the first step of cholesterol synthesis it was patented in 1987 and approved for the medical use in uh, 2003 it is available in japan south korea and india in us it is the uh, it got the fda approval in 2009 then we will discuss a little bit about the antidepressant drugs. So what are the antidepressants and how they work? So antidepressants are a class of the drug that reduce the symptoms of the depressive disorders by correcting chemical imbalances of the neurotransmitters in the brain. Chemical imbalances may be responsible for the changes of the mood and behavior. So neurotransmitters are vital as they are communication link between the nerve cell of the brain. Neurotransmitter inside the vesicles found in the nerve cell which are released by one nerve taken up by other nerve. Neurotransmitters not taken by the other nerve can taken by the some nerve and release them. This is known as a reuptake. The prevalent neurotransmitter of the brain specific to depression are the serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine, also known as the noradrenaline. In general, antidepressants work by inhibiting the reuptake of the specific neurotransmitter, hence increasing their levels around the nerve within the brain such as the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor SSRIS and antidepressant that will affect the serotonin never in the world brain myo monoamine neurotransmitters are neurotransmitters that uh, uh, neuromodulator that contain one amino group that connected with the aromatic in other chain like serotonin dopamine ephedrine and norepinephrine then classification of antidepressant we have TCA the tricyclines and tetracyclines, for example, imipramine, uh, doxepin, uh, desipramine, amoxepine, and these, uh, etc. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors like uh, trinitrapine, uh, monoclavamide, and uh, phenyl phenylzine. Then we have SSRIs, so which are the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. This is the most important class of antidepressant drugs like uh, fluoxetine. Uh, fluvoxamine, uh, citalopram, uh, and uh, S, S citalopram, these things. Okay. Uh, I have discussed little, uh, only I have discussed about the uh, monoamine uh, oxidase inhibitor or myoise in my class. Uh, and uh, you should know that uh, these are the last result of when the, the other, this is the last step. Okay. This is the last option which uh, the uh, doctors prefer because these have uh, very uh, some crucial side effects also. Okay. So now let us discuss a little bit about the <laughs> anti-cancer drugs. So anti-cancer drugs, there are many things which I already have discussed in very detail in the, I think in week 11, I have discussed in very detail the anti-cancer drugs, different different anti-cancer drugs. Today I only will summarize, I will not uh, discuss uh, very much about this anti-cancer drugs. So basically I have, uh, so there are different different cluster of anti-cancer drugs. So first let us discuss a little bit about what is the cancer. So we all know the key points. Let us discuss the key points. Okay. So cancer cells have the defects in the normal regulatory controls <clears throat> governing the cell growth and division. Such defects arise from the mutation resulting in the activation of the oncogenes and the inactivation of the tumor suppression genes. Defects in the signaling pathway are commonly found in the cancer cells. The pathway stimulating cell growth and division are overactive as a result of the overproduction of a crucial protein in the pathway or the production of the abnormal protein. The proteins involved include the growth factors, receptor uh, signal proteins and kinases. The production of the regulatory proteins which suppress the cell growth and division is suppressed in many cancers. The cell cycle consists of the four phases. Progression through the cell cycle is controlled by the cyclines and cycline dependent kinases moderated by the restraining proteins. Defects in this uh, 
system have been detected in 90% of cancer. Apoptosis is a destructive process leading to cell death. Cells have monitoring systems which check the general health of the cell and trigger the process of apoptosis. If there are too many defects, regulatory proteins have moderating influence on the apoptosis. Defects in the apoptosis increase the chances of the defective cell developing into the cancerous cells and reduce the effectiveness of the several drugs. Telomars act as a splices and um, stabilize the ends of the DNA. Normally, they decrease the size and the, uh, each replication until they are too short to be effective, resulting in the cell death. Cancer cells activate an expression of the enzyme uh, called uh, telomerase to maintain the telomere and become immortal. Angiogenesis is a process by which tumors stimulate the growth of the uh, stimulate the growth of the new blood vessels, which provide the nutrients required for the continued growth. Agents which inhibit the angiogenesis are useful in anti-cancer therapy to inhibit the tumor growth and to enhance the effectiveness of the other drugs. Metastasis is the process by which the cancer cells break free of the primary tumor, enter the blood supply, set up the secondary tumor in the tissues. To do this, the regulatory control which fix the cells to specific environment and which destroy the cells became uh, detached and overruled. Uh, uh, the surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy are used to treat the cancer. Chemotherapy use, um, usually involves combination of the drugs uh, having different targets of the uh, mechanism of action and traditional anti-cancer drugs are generally cytotoxic and more modern drugs are selective in the action. Cancer cells can also have intrinsic and acquired resistance to the anti-cancer drug. Resistance may be due to the poor uptake of the drug and increased production and the target protein and uh, mutation to prevent the drug binding to the target. Alternative metabolic pathways, the efflux system, uh, which expel the drugs from the cell. Intercalating drugs, so there are, the, this were all little bit about the uh, cancer cells and everything. So there are different, different agents which, uh, uh, which acts in different, different mechanism in case of the anti-cancer drug. So basically anti-cancer drug targets are huge. There are various targets which can act as the anti-cancer. So there are mainly uh, the, in the case of the anti-cancer drug, it targets the DNA replication, the steps, the enzymes which are involved in the DNA replication, different different enzyme receptors are targeted. Uh, so one such uh, we have discussed in our class also. So there are intercalating drugs which contain a planar aromatic and heteroaromatic ring system which can slide between base pair of the DNA helix. Now, okay, now, al alkylating agents contain electrophilic group that react with the nucleophilic centers of the DNA. If the two electrophilic groups are present, intrastand or interstand by cross-linking of the DNA is possible. Nitrogen masters react with the guanine groups of the DNA to produce cross-linking. The reactivity of the agents can be lowered by attaching the electron withdrawing groups to the nitrogen to increase the selectivity against your DNA over proteins. Incorporation of the important biosynthetic uh, blocks, uh, uh, building blocks, uh, aids the uptake of the rapidly dividing cells. Cisplatine and analogs are the metalating agents which can cause interest and cross-linking. They are commonly used for the treatment of testicular and now, ovarian cancer, CC1065 analogs are highly potent alkylating agent which are being considered for the use of the antibody drug conjugates. Now, calicimicin is a natural product which acts as a nucleophile to produce the diuretical species. And the reaction with the DNA ultimately leads to the cutting of the DNA chains. Also, we have the antisense molecule that have been designed. Uh, to inhibit the mRNA molecules to coat uh, the proteins which suppress the apoptosis. So there are different different anti-cancer uh, drugs. Uh, I, I think I have discussed in detail in the uh, week 11 course content. You can check it from there also. There are uh, like two isomerase inhibitors. They can act as a uh, particular very good target for the anti-cancer. So then we have the components which induce the apoptosis of the malignant cell, the selective uh, apoptosis in the malignant cell, which also have uh, different different enzyme like kinase enzymes which are kinase inhibitors are a very good class of the anti-cancer drugs okay so these uh, are different different kinases uh, different different enzyme ca can be uh, acts as a anti-cancer drug target so let us discuss a little bit about kinase, kinase inhibitors. So kinase is a uh, very important or crucial uh, enzyme, a very broad class of en enzyme in our body. Okay. So what does it do? So protein kinase is an enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of the phosphate group from high energy phosphate donating molecule uh, to specific substrate. This process is known as the phosphorylation. Okay. Where the substrate gains the phosphate group and the high energy ATP molecule donates the phosphate group, the enzyme is involved in many biological signaling pathways like in the signal for example uh, that is the signal transduction and effectors of the cellular function such as cell proliferation and apoptosis so basically what does this kinase do so this enzyme this is a substrate and we have a high energy phosphorylated molecule
choose like ATP. Uh, so this ATP has three phosphate units. We all know the gamma phosphate unit is incorporated in the substrate by the uh, by the in kinase enzyme, and we have this ADP. Okay, so this is the structure of ADP. This phosphate group, this gamma phosphate, this is the alpha beta, and this is the gamma phosphate. It is incorporated into the particular substrate. So now this in how this incorporation happens? There are three amino acids which are very crucial in case of the kinase metabolism, the kinase uh, enzyme. Okay, these are the serine. Theonine and tyrosine. If you look carefully, there is one common uh, structural aspect in serine, theonine, and tyrosine. All have a hydroxyl group in this R group, R position. Okay, in the R uh, position, it all have the three have the hydroxyl group. Basically, this hydroxyl group is getting phosphorylated. Okay, and uh, by this and uh, by this uh, for this gamma phosphate group adds up to this hydroxyl group uh, in the serine, theonine, and tyrosine. So basically, the kinase enzymes they are two type of kinase enzyme. One is the serine theonine kinase, and one other one is tyrosine kinase. Okay, and based on, so why I am uh, discussing most uh, more about the kinase because kinase inhibitor. The inhibitors uh, which in uh, which acts on this enzyme kinase are uh, um, they have uh, come up as a very good drug target in case, especially in case of the anti-cancer drug discovery. Okay, the inhibitors of this drug uh, if there are I mean uh, the different different kinases like thousands of uh, almost uh, almost thousands of the different kinase family uh, and uh, all these uh, kinases can be. Not, um, uh, taken up as a drug target to develop new drugs so, uh, which are which uh, so but uh, using as a using a drug as a kinase inhibitor or using a kinase inhibitor to treat uh, different different disease has one challenge because this kinase enzyme uh, is the same for the hum normal uh, humans and also for same for the anti uh, I mean the tumor cells or so on. So we have to check see if this kinase inhibitors can uh, selectively bind to the anti cancer cells kinase and also to the uh, cellular uh, not uh, to the normal uh, or healthy human cells. Okay, this is a challenge. So how? So as I have uh, discussed about it, uh, protein kinases are of two type. One is serine theonine kinase, and another is tyrosine kinase. What are the groups? The serine theonine kinase can be the like receptor serine theonine kinase. For example, TGF beta. This is a family. We have non-receptor serine theonine kinase like PK, PKC, MAP kinase, Aurora kinase, etc. These are the examples, okay, of this particular family. Receptor tyrosine kinase like EGFR, PDGFR, FG, FGFR, and non-receptor like CSRC, BCR, ABL. So these are the very important. BCR, ABL is a very important kinase family. The human genome has 30 to uh, 30 to 35 K, means 30 to 35 thousand. Uh, uh, kinase genes some protein kinase uh, genes are the 518 and protein phosphate groups are around uh, 100 so how this kinase inhibitors act basically so the serine theonine kinase have a side chain of hydroxyl which is get phosphorylated uh, by this uh, adp uh, it uh, atp to um, atp by this protein chi phosphate and this uh, gives the cell sig cellular signal okay so the growth factor attached to the receptor and receptor uh, cell division and tyrosine kinase start gives the signal so this signaling uh, uh, instruct the cell to get a divide into the two and cell division happen so now if there is any uh, problem with this particular uh, this, uh, signaling pathway so what will happen uncontrollable cell growth will happen and uh, we will have this malignancy or which is known as the un cancer cell so whenever we are discussing about this uh, kinase molecule or this uh, kinase uh, uh, enzyme so there are uh, this position is very important this is known as the uh, uh, atp binding pocket of this in so designing kinase inhibitor has several aspects just like normal inhibitors like competitive inhibitor we can have the uh, reversible irreversible inhibitor covalent inhibitor but mainly important one are the competitive inhibitor which uh, which binds or the reversible inhibitor which binds in the uh, place of the substrate itself so for the uh, kinase enzyme the substrate is the atp so atp binding pocket is very important and whenever the kinase inhibitor is designed we have to uh, look at the atp binding pocket okay which is near the hinge region hinge region means the kinase enzyme has two different part one is the uh, uh, beta uh, one is known as the c uh, uh, n block and one uh, or the n residue and another known as c residue and both the residues are joined by this hinge region where the atp binds okay and the competitive inhibitors also bind in this position 
so for example one example of a kinase inhibitor is the, the drug glyphic or this is also known as the uh, this drug glyphic which is a bcr abl kinase inhibitor the treatment of inhibition uh, treatment of uh, leukemia inhibition of bcr abl kinase so what happened so this is the substrate protein this is the bcr abl kinase where the atp uh, binds and this atp uh, forms adp and the, the this substrate protein is phosphorylated and this signal from the cell proliferation or survival which leads to the leukemia but when there is a BC, um, this glyphic molecule which is a competitive inhibitor it binds to the atp binding pocket of bcr abl kinase now there is no signal and new no leukemia so this is one example how the kinase inhibitor act as the anti cancer drugs okay so this was the last uh, topic of today's uh, class so today what we discussed we summarized a few things about our uh, from our course okay pattern of the question and the shift will be the same or the different uh, section abc max so all these things the max distribution i cannot tell you right now okay uh, and uh, this all this pattern pattern will be the same for the two ships okay there may be minor changes but more or less it will be the same and all this max distribution and these things uh, i cannot tell you right now but all these details will be notified to you via email okay so by the end of this week you will be receiving an email regarding the examination and all the details about the examination it will be notified you particularly via the email by the end of this week okay right now i cannot tell you but uh, i think by the end of this week by the 18th or 19th of the october you will be uh, notified all the details okay so if you have any doubt any query regarding the course content the topics you can let me know i will just share my email id so this is my email id if you have any doubt or any query regarding any course topic of this organic chemistry and biology and drug development please let me know via email okay i will be available uh, every time uh, via email before your examination uh, so you can let me know if you have any problem or any doubt uh so thank you all for joining it today it was our last class for this uh, organic chemistry and biology and drug development last live session so after today there is some uh, question for subject i have type question means i don't get your uh, question actually uh, can you rephrase your question i do not understand what are you asking uh ppt means what are you uh, i mean i'm not getting it still now are you uh, asking that uh, from ppt the question will be given or not yeah from the ppt you can expect uh, not directly but the topics which i have covered you can expect the question from that topics okay the pp in the ppt i have tried to cover up all the topics which are in your course content so you can expect few questions from that okay anyway it will be fine i think you will be uh, given the you will give the examination well because you all are very prepared you have answered all the question very correctly in the class all the students who have joined the classes regularly uh, you have uh, joined the classes and you have answered the questions very uh, perfectly so i think it will be fine so all the best for your examination so i will close the session today note down my email id and if you have any doubt uh, regarding any topic you can let me know through the email i will try to uh, give you some notes or anything if you have any uh, on a particular topic so thank you all i will leave the session and all the best for your examination